And uh, McKinn, um, you guys pressured Teddy Bridgewater on 30 two percent of his dropbacks um on sunday what was allowing you guys to have so much success up front and how do you keep that rolling uh, i think it, it's understanding their offensive line uh, and doing our particular research throughout the week uh, and then the game plan that our coaches put together from uh, a collective understanding from the secondary and then up front of how we wanted to pressure them and really understanding where he likes to escape um, and so that was kind of our focus to make sure that we got after him in those particular ways. Uh, I'm not going to divulge kind of our game plan to some extent because we play him again. Mm -hmm. Also, um, you know, with so much attention um, being on the guys on the outside, you know, usually you're one of the guys that's double teamed a lot. What was it like for you to, instead of being the dirty work as you often do, um, for you to be able to eat the way you did on Sunday with those two sacks? Uh, it's a great opportunity. Anytime I have an opportunity to get one-on-one -on -one blocks, uh, expectations for me to win. Uh, and so uh, I welcome the opportunity to con continue to have uh, more one-on-one -on -one opportunities uh, as we continue to play uh, throughout the season. Um, and that, that'll be my ultimate focus, to continue to win one-on-ones and, and make a name uh, for myself. But I can't do that without the help of my guys outside from the defensive ends as well as Vita and Will that have come in and played at a high level as well. And the secondary has been doing their job from the standpoint of uh, being in the right place at the right times and, and not allowing guys to run free. Thank you. Okay, next is going to be Greg Allman. <laughs> Hey, Dalek, I want to ask if I could about Ryan Jensen, um, going up against him in practice. Just just what you like about him and, and where he's elevated his game since you got here started last year. Yeah, Ryan, I've gone against him here, obviously. I practiced multi, uh, multiple times throughout the last couple of years. Um, and then probably most notably, uh, we went against each other when he was with the Ravens. So I've always had respect for his game. Uh, he's a hard-nosed center, a uh, bigger body uh, than most centers that uh, we actually see. So he has a, that advantage, uh, can move quickly, uh, fast, athletic movements. And so for me, uh, it's been a great test as we see uh, similar offensive linemen, uh, but if I can beat Ryan on a consistent basis or can be able to compete with him on a consistent basis, it's going to be a lot easier for me to have success uh, when I get into the games. Thanks. All right, next is going to be Ed and Cena. Hi, Dom, again, I know you kind of mentioned, uh, you know, with, with the pressure that you guys are getting in that interior, you know, Will Golston and, and Vita and, and what they've been able to do. What's what's been special about them this year in terms of what what they've been able to do to help out getting getting that 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 pressure on the quarterback? Uh, truthfully, I've seen an amazing growth with Evita, uh First and foremost, uh, him understanding the game, him understanding how people want to block him, uh, and then his athleticism. I think he took time this off season to to work on himself uh, as an individual athlete, and that's showing up as well as consistently staying uh, in the weight room doing extra work after practice and before practice to maintain uh, his success. Uh, and then going the same thing with Will. Will took uh, upon himself this off season to compete with me uh, in, in wanting to come in at a certain weight. Uh, and then obviously in particular get stronger, uh, which he's done. Uh, very proud of him from that aspect. And then uh, he's understanding the game a lot better and understanding our defense and how he fits in and how he can be a, a dominant force. And so I think truthfully now all you guys are just seeing uh, their hard work uh, pay off for them. And how, how much of, of some of that has to do too with maybe the, the second year in, in the scheme? I mean, is there something of, of you know, the, the fact that you, know, you guys are – or are all you talk about working in consistency with each other that maybe you guys are kind of all getting this scheme a little bit better in the second year? Yeah, I think we understand the scheme uh, quite well um, and adding different layers into that scheme to work where at, at the very beginning of just learning it, uh, you're kind of on a focus level of just saying, all right, I'm going to make sure I'm in the right place to where I'm going to look at secondary and thirdary things to where I can take my game to a different level. And so I think that's where guys are very comfortable with what they need to get done and how they need to execute. And uh, they're doing that and then being able to find other ways to not only help themselves, but help their teammates to make plays. Thank you. All right, next we're going to go to Kevin O'Donnell. If you're in the media interested in asking questions, please raise your hand. And Dominic, and, uh, just talking with uh, Ali Marpet, he said, you know, last year there was different components of the defense that were, you know, would, would play really well. But this year it's kind of a collective group. 
Um, what's been most impressive to you about this group of defense? And obviously, this is early and, and you still have another level you probably want to go to. But what's impressed you the most so far about this group? As our, uh, our total defense? Is your, is your question? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I think our total defense is, uh, like I said earlier, just having the ability to be a lot more comfortable within the scheme and what's expected of us and how to execute uh, and then being able to go out there and do that on a consistent basis. I think one thing that's going to allow us to continue to get better um, throughout the year as we need to continue to improve uh, is just some of our technique aspects, being able to hone in on, on further details, um, rather than just kind of looking at the basics uh, of our defense and being able to just kind of accomplish those pieces. Uh, and then collectively understanding how both the front and the, and the back, the back end work together when it comes to the passing game and even in the running game as well, understanding how teams want to attack us uh, as a three, four defense. Uh, and especially when we're in certain um, game planning situations, but also just in general, how people want to attack three, four defenses. Devin White obviously is off to a pretty good start. You don't get to see him until you look at the tape probably most of the time. But what's really stood out to you about him in his second year? Uh, Devin has got a lot of confidence. Uh, and he's been able to come in since the beginning of camp, in my opinion, uh, in commanding the huddle, uh, making sure guys are in the right place, making, making sure people are being accountable. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the only way you can do that and gain the respect of your teammates is for you to play at a high level. And I think he's been playing at a high level since we started camp, uh, been in his playbook very clearly throughout the offseason. Um, and he's proving that when he when he gets on the football field. All right, next we're going to go back to Jenna Lane. And Dama, can you mention the secondary? Um, and I know that obviously they're they're playing behind you, but you can see some of this stuff on tape. Um, what stood out to you about Antoine Winfield Jr.? Because, I mean, you know what it's like being thrust in there as a rookie with, with a lot of responsibility on your plate. Um, what, what stood out to you in terms of his play, but also in terms of his preparation? Uh, I, I like Antoine Winfield a lot. Uh, he's very quiet. We haven't actually interacted a whole bunch, uh, but very quiet, humble kid, uh, true professional. I can see it just probably because of his father. Uh, having that experience, but he's very focused, very detail oriented, uh, asks great questions throughout our walkthroughs and in, in meetings uh, when we're, we're all together. Uh, and I think those details and those things that are asked of him are starting to show up on the football field as he's gotten a chance to get after uh, the quarterback uh, or come on blitzes and different pieces from that nature. So uh, one thing I think there's, he has a very, very bright future uh, as long as he stays on that pass and remains consistent. Uh, and being as a being a rookie, I I don't think there's a, a a way of saying. Basically, to me, being a rookie is just a title uh, based on your year that you had you years that you you obviously not played in the NFL, and so he doesn't look at it that way. And I think that's something that allows him to play at a high level and not be nervous. And that's what I really had to do when I came in as a a top draft pick and and kind of thrown into the fire. And you're a passionate guy yourself. What's it like being on the other side of, of that? Well, you guys are on the same side of the field, but like when, um, when you see Tom going through the range of emotions that he does during games and he gets so fired up and, and sometimes he's chewing guys out and then he's celebrating with guys in the end zone. What's it like seeing that, that kind of passion on the offensive side of the ball? Uh, I actually haven't had an opportunity to see too much of it. Uh, most of the time I'm hearing of it secondhand because usually when he's off the field, I'm on the field. Uh, but uh, overall, I think uh, having great passion and energy is, is a key part and, and something that's going to be very important with kind of how COVID has made it to where we don't have fans uh, on the football field or, or in the stadiums, excuse me. Um, so I think it's great. I think it's uh, a form of accountability as well, uh, and, and I welcome it. All right, our last question is going to come from Zach Blodner. Just want to say I love the background and the personal branding you got going on there. Very smart. Um, I just want to ask about off the field, what kind of advice you're giving, not only to you guys like Vita Vea, but just younger players in general on how to take care of, you know, their business and how to handle it. You've obviously had a long career. What kind of advice do you give the younger guys that are in the game? Uh, I think it's uh, – it just kind of depends uh, on – the who the player is, um, but probably my best example for you is uh, Sean Bunting um, and 
we were talking about cars the other day and I told him I was giving him a hard time because he has a G wagon in my, and that's like, that's my wife's car. So, uh, but I was just telling him is like, it's a great car, something for you to have uh, and enjoy. You worked hard obviously through college, but make sure you're, you're being smart with your money. Uh, and it, and just because you can go out there and buy, you may want to look at leasing it uh, versus going and just paying for it all in cash just because uh, there's different ways that I'm sure you're a young kid, you may want to get a new car in two or three years. So if you lease it, you have the opportunity to turn it back in and get something brand new. So I think it just overall it just depends on uh, who it is, uh, what we're talking about, uh, but happy to give my advice uh, because I haven't gotten to where I, I've gotten in my life without great advice from mentors around the country, let alone people in the locker room that, I, that I've trusted from guys like Kyle Vandenbosch and, and different people like that.